Good morning, guys. Welcome back into our next three round impact analysis here. We're going to be going through all the teams, two rounds are in the books, and we're looking forward now to that next three and just seeing now that we know a little bit more around some of the teams that are struggling a little bit, some of the teams we know are really, really strong and potentially those teams that we can ta look to target against because you can get attacking stats, even the, the tackle breaks, the offloads, and even just the general base kind of comes into it. And we're seeing teams that are completing well, like the Raiders, being able to score pretty well across the board. Obviously with some attacking stats, they're keeping the ball in play, less scrums, less, you know, whatever else that, that slows the game down. You're seeing the ability for a lot of these plays to get good base stats, but then the attack on top. So we want to be looking towards those types of teams and then players from those squads that are going to be very helpful for us there. So that's a really, really nice example. The Raiders of a squad that uh, you do expect some decent stats out of. You saw the Tigers there for an example there on the weekend against the Raiders because the ball was in play a little bit more. They were able to get some sort of junk points at the end in offloads, in, in runs, in, in sort of line breaks and the like you saw from Galvin, you saw from Isaiah Papali when they were trying to put points on in the back end. You'll be able to see that from a few teams there. As I said, if the error counts are a little bit lower, ball in play more, you should be able to see some decent points at that. But we do need to speak about the Tigers now that they're obviously done with their buy for round one. We got to see them play. And now you can look forward at their draw and go, okay, do we want anyone from this team? Obviously, Galvin's going to be really, really popular. We saw Isaiah Papali end up with a, a good score on the weekend. Again, a lot of junk at the back end of games, but he's one of those players that can do that, that's for sure. So when you look towards the Tigers start now, it's, it's Cowboys, Eels, Dolphins, which overall doesn't seem crazy difficult, but you know, three teams there that that had you know, good good out, good out performances, good output on the weekend. Eels coming up against the Panthers and had a close one. The Cowboys won, the Dolphins won as well, following that with the Dragons in round six. So overall, this next four for them, pretty solid little run. And then it's the Panthers and the Broncos where you would expect some tougher scores. But if you are looking at Galvin, and yeah, potentially like a Samuel Lefeno who did have extended minutes, in my opinion, then this next little run will probably be okay for them. And hopefully they've made you know, a decent amount of money by that point before they could have a bit of a tough one against the Panthers and the Broncos from there. So that's the Tigers to kick things off in this one. The Titans guys, they come up against the Dogs, the Dolphins into the Cowboys and the Raiders. So the next four for them, not too bad at all. We do need to see a bounce back from the Titans for them to have some relevance. Some people I know have messaged me and are looking at someone like Tanner Boyd, and, and I completely understand that if you're looking now for someone that doesn't have a buy for a long time until round 13, who has the dual hooker and half flexibility to positions right now that are you know fairly tough. Obviously, with Harry Grant having his buy, we're unsure on the minutes of, of Brandon Smith. It's really only Robson, Joey Lussick um, that, that are dominating in the hooking position. So he's someone that people are looking at. Do you have a crack at someone like Tino? If you're interested in him, what's happening with, you know, Keeney, is Jaden Campbell coming back? All of those things now, based on what we see in the in the team list today, we'll be able to make decisions knowing that we don't have to worry about a buy for them anymore. So there's a few guys we're looking at. You know, Dave Fafita is going to come back soon. He could be an interesting one as well. And, and that next few games run, nothing to be scared of. Let's say that. Dolphins, they have the buy this week. So guys, you are holding from... From this team, obviously, you know, Hammer, Flegler, two real clear guys that you want to be, uh, and, and Aiken, for example, if you bought him, three guys that you're, you're very much looking to hold on to. People outside of that, you've got Max Plath that uh, could show some interest next week. We have Isaiah Katoa. So I think after we get through this buy for them, there will be a few relevant players to look at from the Dolphins, given they'll get just all the way through until round 14. So they do play that round 13 matchup, which is very important. So do watch out for Dolphins after this week where they have the run of Titans, Tigers into the Broncos there. For the Storm guys, this is a, a worry kind of game for them because if you were to buy any any Storm players, they then have a, a, a buy in round four, right? So this is something that I'm slightly worried about having Harry Grant, having you know, Pap and then Joe Chan as well is that I do need to make sure that I have all of my 21 on deck so they can at least have potentially one looper in there um, for for that round matchup and have 18 on the park. And let's hope that there's no injuries. I do have Keanu Kinney at the moment, so he would drop that down to 17 available players. And, and maybe he's a guy I can use as a 
you know, trade target next week to make sure that I'm covered for round four as well. So yeah, I'm looking at, just look to, look to make sure that you have the wing fullback cover and make sure that you look to have the hooker cover for Grant. And then, yeah, what, making sure you do have that full 17 on the park come round four, whether it is via one trade or, or not coming into that one. But yeah, after that, then we'll look at them. But obviously Broncos, Dogs, Roosters, we'll follow that one. But a Knights matchup here. When I say worry about that, just worry about trading in guys. And, and perhaps an interesting one at that, if you wanted to grab him this week, I understand. But you could also wait till round five when he has the Broncos. Look, it'll be a, a matchup with probably some points at least, which is cool. And that's going to help Pap. For the Sharkies, guys, they have a buy in a couple of weeks now. So it's the Dragons into the Raiders. So a couple of decent matchups, you would say, especially this first one. Uh, for the Sharkies in in round three. And then, yeah, you're looking forward to them having that buy, getting that out of the way. And then you got a nice run all the way to round 16 for them, which would be awesome. So that's what you're looking at um, with with that one there. For the Sharkies, just be aware if you are looking at getting a Nico Hines and then you'd say round six would be the play. If you're seeing the, the big scores from Ronaldo Melitalo, Teague Wilton, these types of guys at the moment, then I would uh, I would probably hold off on those guys just because that round five will be a little bit tough if you do have a couple, if you have Cam McInnes at the moment, as an example there. But um, these two matchups, especially this Dragons one, is going to be a good one to, to have a look at, that's for sure. Uh, very exciting one for attacking stats, but don't get sucked into that and, and buy a couple just because of that buy in round five. So round six is when I'll be looking to target Nico. Myself, Panthers guys. So you've got the Broncos, the Roosters, and the Seagulls. So still three pretty tough matchups before that buy in round six. If you don't happen to have many of their attacking players, then round seven will be the purchase time where it's Tigers, Cowboys, Bunnies, Dogs. All all teams that should be able to you know leak some points for sure. And by that stage, the Panthers will be absolutely humming. So I'm excited to have guys like Taylor May uh, from that point onwards. But I do think that he's going to have some fun matchups in the next three, Isaiah Yo should come out and crush it as well over the next three. Bunnies, guys, you're looking at, obviously they're buying round seven, but Roosters, Dogs, and the Waz. So three sort of pretty solid matchups. The Bulldogs actually you know, hung in that game pretty well against the Sharks for the first half of that before they um, you know, they they struggled a little bit um, in the back end, obviously. The, the Sharkies just tied them out and, and cooked them there at the end. But uh, yeah, Rabbitohs guys, not super excited on any of them. Cam Murray looks like he will be a hold guys given he's moving back to 13, but don't jump on, you know, Hawkins or anything like that so soon. I don't think will be the play and uh, Jackie White in return. So hopefully a bit of an improved performance for the bunnies. The dogs there guys come up against the Titans, the bunnies and the roosters. So pretty solid sort of matchup, especially this week. Like if you are holding, Dogs players, I think it's a, a correct week to, to stick solid. You know, Burton started playing better. Um, you know, the team in general does need to get through a game without an injury. That would be nice. That would be very helpful for him. And I think they'll be able to play a little bit better with some decent rotations and potentially changing things up in their back five. I'm not sure how that's going to happen, but I don't know. If Ta- is Taff going to make, is Taff going to be there? Is Tracy going to play center? There's a few things, a few question marks, but I do think the dogs will play better. So not purchasing any dogs, but I think holding is fine. For the Eels guys, you're looking at the Seagulls, the Tigers into the Raiders. So overall, a solid sort of run coming up for them here. And this Eagles game is going to be really fun, but the, the Eels playing really well. And overall, across their squad, obviously Penasini's playing well. Their back rowers are doing doing good things. You know, Hopgood in the middle, Joey Lusick. All guys that I think can continue to do well, especially as this team's doing well. And keep an eye out on on Mitch Moses and where he's going to be at over the next few weeks. Raiders have the Waz, the Sharkies, and the Eels. So again, a very solid kind of matchup. Obviously, they had a couple of easier ones to kick things off in the Knights, as we saw. And then the Tigers last week. So you're looking at um, potentially a little bit less on the attacking stat side because they've scored so many points. But I do think they'll be clearly in these games, and hopefully for like a the the middles type of type of uh, players in in Smithies that it's a lot more base in this game than what has happened in the last two. Anyway, so look for more base stat guys, and maybe a you know back down to the pack for a couple of their attacking numbers type of players, especially against the you know, the Wars this week, who away from home is going to be a very tough matchup. 
you know, if you're looking at a Hosking, I just think it's very, very tough to see him get attacking stats again, especially against a good defensive outfit. So we'll see what happens in this one. Uh, Dragons have a, uh, come up against the Sharkies, the Eagles, and the Knights. So for them, this matchup should be okay. Could get absolutely smashed if the Sharkies come out hot and Dragons play poorly again. So just be aware of that with your guys in your Dragons. Don't get too excited by any. Don't buy any at all. Uh, if you do look to sell a Flanagan or something like that, I completely understand. Sully, I still think as a hold, he'll get some attacking stats at some point, and it won't just be this 30 base, which is still okay. Obviously, I understand you want more, and if he is the sort of mid-range guy that you need to get down to trade out, to go up, down, whatever, I do understand that. And a few people have messaged me around that. And look, you're not going to get smashed by Sully, are you? So if you're covered in the center's wing fullback, just make sure you're covered and set for, for Pat. Being out next week, let's move to the Knights. So they have the Storm, the Waz, and the Dragon. So the next two matchups are going to be a little bit harder for them. I don't think like Elliot's going to get junk tries like that, like good lines and stuff, but you know, Storm will be a better defensive outfit than what the Cowboys are, in my opinion. And then the Warriors as well. So you are looking at, if you're holding Ponga, you just need the, Storm, the, the Knights to go to another level and play better, and he'll be able to score better. I am slightly worried on it, but I think if you've held... If you've got Ponga now, you're holding steady. He will have a big game at some point. He still hasn't scored horrendously, 35 and 41. It's obviously a, a decent amount under his price point, but he could go bang at any point, and it would be a worry moving him on at this stage, especially with Pat being out next week. Broncos, they come up against the Panthers, the Cowboys, and the Storm, which on the surface looks pretty tough. And you know, looking at Walshie, we know that he can just be good against any team. I, th I think especially this year, like last year you would have you know, ganged up on a few of the, the lesser teams, but he's very well needed and he could have a really big week here. He could also have a very low week as well if the Panthers can come defensively and, and shut him down. But he'll get kick meters, he'll get to kick goals. How many tries will they score? I do think if the Panthers come out and play well, they'll beat the Broncos just with how they're playing currently and will Payne Haas be there? If he is, he should be able to go well. I do think that they should... We've seen him have lingering injuries and he just keeps playing through them and he doesn't score as well fantasy-wise. So I do think that even having that one week, one week rest could do him the world of good longer term for fantasy and his output for sure. But um, yeah, not too much else to say on Broncos. It's Carrigan, Cobos. Just worry about Cobo with the really, really tough matchups coming up. Eagles, guys, they've got the Eels, Dragons, and the Panthers. So a sort of... Solid setup, especially the next two weeks. They'll have a close game against the Eels. Dragons, they should be able to beat. And then Panthers will be a really fun matchup if the Eagles are playing well. Just be aware that um, you know, Turbo should continue to, to score probably about where he's at at the moment. Sort of that 40-odd to 50-odd should be how it goes against the Eels. And it could be anything against the Dragons before Panthers and Waz. So, yeah, a so kind of solid next three rounds for them. And all of these teams I'm talking about now and this back end, guys, you don't have to worry about buyers for them until sort of around, what, 11, 12, uh, sorry, 10, 11, 12, 13 will be these last few. So the Warriors, guys, well, yeah, 13 for these guys now, Eagles and um, and the Warriors and the Broncos. Before that, it was, yeah, 10, 11, 12, those last few. Uh, the Warriors, Raiders, Knights, Rabbitohs. So things open up a little bit for the Waz now. And if you are looking at attacking outside backs, SJ should be able to play a little bit better. I imagine this one, if he gets the goal kicking back, great. If not, good for my Luke Metcalf in Supercoach. But uh, yeah, it kind of opens up a little bit. You do see some more green, some more blue. Obviously blue, guys. It's uh, Blue is the bottom four teams from last year. You've got Rabbitohs, Eagles. That's uh, all teams that were just outside the eight. You then have yellow is just inside the eight. And then the red ones are the top four teams from last year, if anyone that was unsure on that. Yeah, so wild should be pretty good. To, to purchase over the next bit, especially attacking players. Roosters, they come up against the Bunnies, the Panthers, and the Dogs before the night. So it does look okay, apart from having the Panthers in round four. Teddy looks awesome. Their halves situation is going to be interesting. Like, is uh, who's going to come in for Kiri this week? Hopefully, Walker can step up, and, and he had a pretty low one on the weekend as well. So watch his price at the moment. But, um, yeah, kind of... It's really just Tedesco in the, in the outside backs for for the Roosters, and and are they going to sort out their their um their pack and their uh their number nine situation? That's for sure. That's what you're looking at with that. And then final finally, guys, it's the Cowboys to finish things off. The Tigers away, it should be a fun matchup for them. Hopefully, get a good win. The Broncos away, which will be a little bit 
tough. I think expect a close one for them. It's always a really fun matchup and, and scores are usually pretty solid across the board in a high quality fixture. And then Titans in round five. So overall, a very good three rounds, I think. Tigers and Titans being probably two of the lowest teams with Dragons, obviously, after that big loss. So yeah, probably one of the best runs of the next three is the Cowboys with that Broncos matchup, who I think that they'll step up against at Suncorp. It'll be a fun one, that's for sure. So I suppose across the board with the Cowboys there, there are some attacking type of players, and we've got Fina Fuiaki being an option this week as well, along with um, with Cotter in there. Robson should be able to maybe put something on this week, or is it just going to go out to the edges and they're going to do their thing? So lay butt for Supercoach and all the rest. I'm more excited about this week. Next week could be an interesting one, that's for sure. But uh, yeah, thanks for watching this one, guys. I'm looking to change up as well. If you are waiting at the end here, you get the inside scoop. But uh, looking to change up my final video on a Sunday, being the five things I learned. And I, I'm i just trying to sort out my mic situation. I can't get the... Um, I want to film them on the, on the phone and just do that sort of close-up of me. Chatting Colin Cowherd style videos of, of going through each and every... Uh, game day and just taking out my big thoughts on certain plays on certain teams on certain players where they're at um yeah i love watching all that that kind of those type of videos and and talk shows on um on the nba for example so i'd like to bring that here i do think there's a little bit of a gap most of the podcasts and out there are really long so i'd like to be short sharp kind of bites after each game so i'll do my thoughts on the actual footy I'll separate that completely from the fantasy and super coach. And then I'll do that fantasy um, video after each game day as well. So that's my plan. I think I'm going to change it this week. I'm just buying a new adapter and hopefully I can just use this because um, yeah, the mic I was using with my phone is just not, hasn't been working. Hence I haven't been doing those style of videos. So hopefully I can connect it to this mic and that will be awesome because the uh, audio quality is pretty bad in here with a little bit of echo. So hopefully I can fix that. But if you, um, if you are excited for that that style of video, I do think that it's something that I'll struggle a little bit with at the beginning, but um, overall, I think that uh, I'll be able to get better and better at it and yeah, maybe hopefully provide a bit of a point of difference in the content space with just some of those short, sharp, not outlandish calls, but you know, big talking points from each game and in just short you know, five to 10 minute little spiels. And uh, yeah, that'll be fun. Let's see how that goes. And then I'll be able to put that on the socials in short, shorter bites as well. Once I have that sorted there with the mic situation. So just getting an adapter and we'll, um, we'll see what happens from there. But thanks again, guys. We'll see you in the next lot of videos.